Just 22 miles long, the beautiful island of Bermuda lies like a jewel in the blue seas of the western North Atlantic Ocean, only 774 miles away from New York. The island was established by British settlers in 1612 and today remains the oldest British colony. Bermuda's unique blend of beauty and history attracts many visitors, with flights arriving regularly from Europe and America. Since the late 1920s, tourism has become Bermuda's major industry, attracting an estimated half million visitors per year. Many new arrivals catch their first sight of the island from the deck of a luxury liner, and these elegant ships are a familiar sight in Dockyard, St. George's and Hamilton Harbors. The beauty of Bermuda is appreciated by the island's residents as well as its visitors, and artists find a constant source of inspiration in the colorful scenery and brilliant skies. In 1543, a shipwrecked sailor left his mark here, carving his initials and the date on Spanish rock overlooking Bermuda's south shore. In fact, the colonization of Bermuda began by accident when a fleet of ships left England in 1609, destined for the American colonies under the flag of the Virginia Company. The fleet, commanded by Sir George Summers, was dispersed in a storm, and its flagship, the Sea Venture, shipwrecked off Bermuda. 150 survivors managed to scramble ashore. Directed by the ship's carpenter, Richard Frobisher, the survivors built another ship, aptly named the Deliverance, from the wreckage of the Sea Venture, in which to continue their journey. A full-size replica of the Deliverance stands on Ordnance Island off St. George's Town Square. Visitors can go aboard on daily tours and explore the ship from top to bottom, including the cramped living and storage area below decks. Traveling in much greater comfort, present-day visitors can enjoy a panoramic view as they approach the historic town of St. George's. The town was first settled by British colonists, who arrived lured by Sir George Summers' reports of Bermuda's lush beauty and fertile soil. First stop for many visitors to St. George's is St. Peter's Church. Built in 1620 on the same site as the original half-timbered structure, St. Peter's is believed to be the oldest Anglican church in the Western Hemisphere. Past and present blend as you stroll down the maze of alleyways in Old St. George's. Their quaint street signs serve as a reminder of the different trades that once flourished here. Turn the corner and you might catch the town crier in traditional costume guiding a group of visitors. In bygone days, the town crier walked the streets calling out the local news. Today, he brings the past alive pointing out historic landmarks such as Bermuda's first print shop on Featherbed Alley. As you explore the narrow lanes, it's easy to let your imagination roam. How many people walked this way in the past? What kind of lives did they lead? Almost every house in the old town has an interesting story attached to it. Some properties are open to the public as National Trust Museums. You'll find one of the most interesting houses on Water Street, in the heart of the town. In the Tucker House Museum, home of Henry Tucker, the community's acting governor in the 1700s, there's a wealth of beautiful furnishings and family portraits lining the walls. Henry Tucker raised a large family here, eight boys and one girl. Lovingly restored, the house still has much of the atmosphere of a family home. 
Another must-see is the Confederate Museum on King's Square, which was built at the turn of the 17th century and used as a base by the Confederate agent during the American Civil War. From the Confederate Museum, it's a short walk to the State House, home of Bermuda's first parliament in 1620. When government transferred from St. George's to Hamilton, the Freemasons took over the State House for a token annual rent, one peppercorn, a tradition faithfully maintained in this colorful ceremony. The peppercorn ceremony is a traditional Bermudian event in which both His Excellency the Governor of Bermuda and the Bermuda Regiment Band always participate. The parade takes place in April, attended by local dignitaries and members of the St. George's Masonic Lodge and watched by a large crowd. Right on time, the governor arrives, by horse and carriage naturally, and dressed in full ceremonial uniform. On this occasion, the guest of honor was a member of the British royal family, Prince Edward, paying a formal visit to the island. With due ceremony, the peppercorn is solemnly handed over. St. George's is a fascinating place, but there's plenty more to see in Bermuda. It's fun to hire a moped and explore the lanes. However, in the 1920s, the island had a very efficient railway system running from St. George's to Somerset. The arrival of American forces and their vehicles in World War II signaled the introduction of cars to the island and by 1948, the railway had closed down. Today, the old railway trails make wonderful scenic hiking routes. Railway enthusiasts will appreciate the memorabilia on display at the Railway Museum at Flats Village in Smith's Parish. Trains were a familiar sight, even running along Front Street. Floating in clear blue skies, a parasailer gets a bird's eye view of the magnificent beaches. On Bermuda's famous South Shore, there's room for everyone. You can even have the beach to yourself for an early morning jog. Bermuda has the most beautiful beaches in the world, the beaches of your dreams, with pink sand, clear blue water, rippling waves and little coves tucked away behind the rocks. If you look closely at a handful of sand, you'll see that the pink coloring is caused by minute fragments of coral which have been washed ashore from the reefs surrounding the island. There's time and space to enjoy it all, on your own, with friends, or with someone special. Flying overhead, Bermuda's national bird, the graceful longtail. This migratory bird heralds the arrival of spring every year and is the only native seabird to nest on the island. There's no hurry, the beach goes on and on. Local ordnance survey maps list over 13 kilometers of beach in Bermuda, so you can wander to your heart's content. But if you're looking for something a little more energetic, Bermuda's the place to test your water ski skills. The island has a well-deserved reputation as a sports fisherman's paradise, with offshore waters rich in game fish. And windsurfers can race to their heart's content. It's one of Bermuda's most popular water sports, demanding to master and spectacular to watch. Yacht racing attracts both local and international sailors to compete in many prestigious events such as the Newport Bermuda Race held every two years and the Marion Bermuda Race. By way of contrast, there's frantic activity at the start of a Bermuda fitted dinghy race. One of the most exciting sports around, dinghy racing starts from May 24th and ends with the race for the Jubilee Cup to commemorate the 1887 Royal Jubilee with races held on alternate Sundays during the spring, summer and autumn. Famous yacht designers such as the American Nathaniel G. Harishoff and Bermuda's Sir Eldon Trimmingham 
were involved in the continued development of Bermuda's fitted dinghies. Originally, these small open boats were used by the islanders for fishing, piloting, freight, and general transport. However, not until the mid-1850s was the word dinghy used specifically to describe a boat specially fitted with large sails, extra ballast, and iron fans bolted onto a 12-foot keel, the original Bermuda fitted dinghy. Increased competition called for a greater amount of sail, up to 1,000 square feet or 300 square meters, and a large crew is needed simply to keep the boats upright. The steersman and the bailer are the most vital crew members. The rest are really human ballast. Races have been won thanks to the skipper ordering the crew to dive off the boat to get it past the finish line. Spectators turn out in force, both on land and at sea. Fitted dinghy races take place on inshore waters so that viewers can watch from the shore. Sailing a Bermuda fitted dinghy calls for a considerable degree of skill, energy, enthusiasm, and a willingness, if all else fails, to go down with all hands on deck. So what else is unique to Bermuda? The world's smallest drawbridge in Somerset is just wide enough to let a sailboat mast through. And there's shark oil, Bermuda's own substitute for a weather satellite. If the oil goes cloudy, there's a storm coming. It's that simple. And these are the world-famous Bermuda shorts, introduced to the island by the British Army, who had always worn shorts in tropical climates since colonial days in India. Bermudians adapted the somewhat baggy military style into the smartly tailored shorts we see today. If worn correctly, with knee-length socks and a blazer and tie, they're cool, stylish, and practical. Gentlemen, please note, real Bermuda shorts must have a three-inch deep hem to ensure that they hang correctly. In Bermuda, stylish practicality applies to the charming architecture as well as to dress. At this local quarry, the workmen are using machine saws to cut a valuable building material, Bermuda stone. Long ago, the early settlers discovered that the porous Bermuda limestone, once cut, gradually hardened, becoming strong enough to withstand even hurricane force winds. It is this sturdy Bermuda stone that dictates the style of the lovely pastel-painted houses. Characteristic features include the so-called welcoming arm steps leading up to the porch and wide chimneys acting as a buttress to reinforce the walls. Springfield, once an old plantation house, has attached to it a traditional buttery building where food would have been kept cool under the high roof before the days of refrigeration. The charm and originality of Bermuda houses is indicated by their names. Look out for quaint street signs as well. These dazzling white roofs are used to filter rainwater into storage tanks beneath and are kept immaculately clean. City Hall in Hamilton is designed in the style of a Bermuda cottage. Its tower sports a weather vane because on a small island, changing weather patterns take priority. Some of the loveliest buildings are Bermuda's churches their dazzling white spires reach up to the bluest sky in the world. Church attendance is an integral part of the Bermudian lifestyle. Local churches are social as well as spiritual centers, and freedom of worship is assured with over a hundred denominations on the island. There's something for everyone in this sportsman's paradise, from world-class golf on a choice of eight 18-hole courses, to rugby, which goes big time in Bermuda each November as the annual Rugby Classic attracts teams from around the world, including the famous New Zealand All Blacks. Cricket has been a favorite sport in Bermuda since the early 1840s, and the season culminates with the annual cup match highlight, a mixture of cricket and carnival held every August. But if you're looking to see and hear a truly Bermudian art form, don't miss the Gombe dancers. 
decked out in their brilliant costumes and towering headdresses, Bermuda's gombes date back to the mid-18th century and feature a wide range of cultural influences, from West Indian to American Indian, African and British, an eclectic mix found only in Bermuda. Hamilton is surely the only city in the world where everyone gets a smile and a wave as they drive into town. Johnny Barnes is a familiar sight at Crow Lane Roundabout on the main entrance to Hamilton, where he stands every weekday morning from 5 a.m. until 10 a.m. Johnny has that special touch that puts a smile on your face at the start of another beautiful Bermuda day. Morning. Morning, Morning. A lot of traffic, huh? What's all right? All right, friend, morning. One love. One friend, have a good day. The city of Hamilton was established in 1793. Its convenient location with easy access to a large deep water harbor made it a natural choice as a business and administrative center of the island. Hamilton has developed rapidly and continues to expand. International businesses have been established in Hamilton since 1953. Companies appreciate the island's excellent telecommunications system, political stability, and tax benefits. A walk around the city reveals a successful blend of the old and the new, with some beautifully restored original buildings. It's worth looking up as you stroll down Front Street. From the right angle, there's a perfect montage of colorful facades above the shop fronts. Even in Bermuda, there's a rush hour. The difference is, there's time to sit and enjoy a Havana cigar and watch the world go by right in the city center. However, dedicated shoppers wouldn't dream of doing such a thing when there's so much to tempt the eye. Bermuda really is a shopper's paradise. Front street windows are lavishly stocked with exquisite jewelry. Classic perfumes. Fine cashmere. Beautiful china and porcelain. Or fine art and antiques. If it's all too much and you can't carry any more shopping bags, why not stop for a leisurely lunch at a charming little restaurant tucked away from the hustle of Front Street? Alternatively, you can beat the traffic in the old-fashioned way with a slow ride in a horse and carriage. Not far from the center of town is Fort Hamilton, a superbly restored fortification dating from 1889. This historic fort was once used to control the approach roads into the city and part of Hamilton Harbor. It is one of a series of fortifications dotted at vantage points around the island, part of a defense network begun by the British in 1609, surviving today as a reminder of Bermuda's strategic importance in those early times. Outside, you'll find cannons mounted around the beautifully maintained lawns. There's something for everyone to enjoy, especially a spectacular view of the city. Fort Hamilton, with its surrounding moat transformed into an exotic garden, remains the sole survivor of the three forts that once dominated Bermuda's central parishes, Forts Langton, Prospect, and Hamilton. Fort Prospect is now used as a water catchment area, and Fort Langton was pulled down in 1985. The Bermuda cedar, endemic to the island, was nearly wiped out when a terrible blight destroyed almost 80% of the trees in the mid-1940s. Cedar wood furniture is now highly valued, and some of the best examples can be seen at Camden, a beautiful old Bermuda house built in the 1700s. Special features include a superb cedar staircase with a wealth of detail. Camden is the premier's official residence and this elegant dining room, with its beautiful table and chairs, is used for entertaining VIPs. The old arrowroot factory still stands in the grounds, a reminder of Bermuda's past, when the manufacture of arrowroot, used like cornstarch as a thickener in cooking, 
was a staple industry. The starch was placed on wooden trays, which were then rolled through the open windows onto slats to dry in the sun. There are daily guided tours around the botanical gardens, introducing visitors to the display houses for cacti and orchids and some fascinating specialized plant collections. Alternatively, why not just wander through the gardens, enjoy the sunshine, and admire the magnificent flowers such as the bird of paradise and the daylily. From plant life to wildlife, it's all here at the Bermuda Aquarium, Museum, and Zoo in Flats Village. The zoo features some exotic residents. Flamingos, imported from the Caribbean in the mid-1930s, have been bred here successfully since 1967. The reptile house features tortoises, terrapins, alligators, and iguanas. Inside the aquarium, it's cool and dark, and the audio phones provide a comprehensive running commentary as you walk around the tanks. This is the next best thing to scuba diving as each tank presents a different aspect of Bermuda's colorful underwater life in all its breathtaking variety. More wonders can be discovered underground in Bermuda's caves. The Crystal Caves in Bailey's Bay were accidentally discovered in 1905 by a young boy searching for his cricket ball which had mysteriously disappeared down a hole in the ground. Both Crystal Caves and the nearby Lemington Caves are open to the public. These marvelous caverns are just two of the many caves that form a subterranean network beneath the surface of the island. They were formed when the sea was about 100 meters below its present level as the ice caps advanced and retreated during the Pleistocene age. These incredible stalactites and stalagmites have grown over tens of thousands of years. Some of them form extraordinary cathedral-like column formations where the two meet. Getting around to places of interest is never a problem. Take a tip from the locals and catch the ferry. It's one of the most pleasant ways to travel. You can get from A to B while sitting in the sun watching the island's lovely coastline drift past. If you'd rather be under the water than on it, helmet diving offers an unusual experience that can be enjoyed by everyone, regardless of age or fitness. With a specially designed helmet linked to an individual air supply, it's fun walking around on the seabed and feeding the fish. You could even teach them a trick or two. For those who prefer not to get their feet wet, a submarine cruise offers the perfect way to explore Bermuda underwater, watch the fish, and go wreck diving. Recently introduced to the island, the submarine enterprise will give you a view of another world, with colorful wrasse, parrotfish, and angelfish drifting past the wide portholes, and possibly a sight of something a little larger, such as a grouper, barracuda, or even a shark. Most exciting of all, the submarine provides a panoramic view of the ocean floor and a close-up of some fascinating wrecks, all that's left of over 300 proud ships whose captains failed to successfully navigate the maze of reefs which surround Bermuda and extend seaward as far as 12 miles. These days, cruise ships line the wharf at Bermuda's West End, but in the past, only battleships would have been granted mooring space here at the Royal Naval Dockyard. Dr. Edward Harris explains how building began on this 25-acre site. At the end of the American Revolutionary War, the Royal Navy lost all of its seaports on the eastern coast of America. As a result, it built the great dockyard here at Bermuda. 
The purpose of this dockyard was to defend the Western Atlantic sea lanes, a function it continued right up through the Second World War. Later in the 19th century, a great series of forts were built throughout Bermuda to defend the dockyard from an American invasion. These forts serve their purpose, and Bermuda today is still a British colony. The Bermuda Maritime Museum had its grand opening in 1975, scheduled to coincide with a visit from Queen Elizabeth II. Since then, the museum has amassed a marvelous collection of over 10,000 items and continues to preserve the island's maritime heritage with exhibits such as maps, artifacts, models, paintings, and this gun, which was recovered from the wreckage of the sea venture. One of the most spectacular displays in the museum is this beautifully restored clock still striking the hours as it did when marking time for the dockyard workmen from its original home in the clock tower. The historic buildings in the dockyard complex have been lovingly restored, often with a lively contemporary twist. The clock tower shopping mall has cobbled floors and an irresistible collection of shops, some of which showcase the work of Bermuda's artists and craftsmen. As the sun melts into the harbor and city lights begin to shine, Hamilton gears itself up for the nightlife. This is the perfect time for a leisurely twilight cruise and to meet up with friends to plan the evening ahead. Choosing a restaurant for dinner can be a rather difficult decision as Bermuda restaurants offer a wide range of local and international cuisine. Later on, you'll find the perfect place to dance the night away. Or you can discover a different beat with the precision marching of the Bermuda Regiment, immaculately turned out in their white uniforms as they perform the traditional ceremony of beating the retreat. You can catch this dazzling event at St. George's, the Royal Naval Dockyard, or right here in the center of Hamilton on Front Street. In 1965, the Bermuda Regiment became the principal local militia, administered by the governor under the British Constitution. Beating the retreat is just one of Bermuda's many ceremonial events, which symbolize the different aspects of this beautiful island, traditional, colorful, and once seen, never to be forgotten.